I remember I was going to see the film in the theaters with my friends. I was going to take them to see it because it was a pretty cool movie to see with your friends. And these friends were also older than me because they, they were in my older sister's friend group. So I went with them and they wouldn't let me in because I was younger. <laughs> and then I pointed to the poster that was literally right beside us at the kind of podium where you, where you go in to see the movie. And you I was said, like, I'm in it. But that's me. I was, I was a lot younger when I did it, when I did The Little Mermaid. I was, well, you did Little Mermaid. You were, yeah, you yeah, were younger, right? Yeah, I was 12 because obviously there was, there was a big time period in between then and now because of COVID. But I, because I was so young, I could really hit higher notes that I can't now. I mean, I, like, I probably can't sing at all now because my voice has changed so much and I struggle to talk regularly without voice cracking so hopefully uh you guys don't catch one. Oh, listen that happened to me I, 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 I sang in a choir when i was a kid oh yeah and yeah. i i got kicked out of the choir oh, because no. my voice changed oh i'm sorry to hear that yeah you know <laughs> obviously i've never gotten over it yeah i could have no it's <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's still i'm still carrying that with me somewhere mm-hmm. can we play mm-hmm. a little bit of the clip in in three some the of, of flounder take a listen yeah. We aren't supposed to be this far from the palace, Ariel. Getting cold fins. Look at this. Flounder, look out! Ah! You okay, Flounder? Uh, sure. You gotta show him who's in charge. Ah! <laughs> Jacob, you're right. Your voice is very different now than it was <laughs> yeah. back then. What, yeah. What's it like listening back to it? It's weird because you know you always... I'm sure you know this, but it's always weird hearing your own voice. Like, you always kind of get a little cringe feeling. And I think because of that, it's... I don't have it as much just because it's I was so young and sometimes when I like when I was watching the film I've seen it about three times now yeah so whenever I'm watching it it's kind of hard to to even recognize my own voice and uh, usually something like that would take me out of the watching it but no it 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 doesn't anymore because obviously I was so young so it's a lot easier to to hear my own voice now yeah and it's a little artifact of what you used to sound like yeah for sure and that's what's cool about um acting for me is that I get to look back on all different uh times in my life when, since I was so little and I got to play a bunch of different roles and obviously like younger roles like Room I played a five-year-old and then in other movies I was I was playing you know more 12 year olds like in Good Boys which is a which is a comedy I did and then obviously now I, I, I'm doing more uh, I guess teenage roles and, yeah yeah um, did, did, did The Little Mermaid mean anything to you? Like, it meant something to me when I was a kid but I'm, I realize I'm 20 years older than you right so did The Little Mermaid mean anything to you? Yeah, it did. I mean, I, I mean, I didn't remember seeing it for the first time just because I was probably shown it at such a young age, but uh, it was definitely one that would be played very often in my household. So just I was very familiar with the songs. Um, so it's interesting because I don't remember ever not knowing The Little Mermaid, if that makes sense, because obviously it's just been such a big pop culture film. So yeah, it's really exciting to kind of. I was I was obviously a fan of of the film and the songs, and then to kind of recreate that, like Kiss the Girl, like what we were just listening to, it was fun. But also I was so scared, like because I had never done anything musical before. I was so nervous, but um, yeah, everyone on set was so cool and just so friendly and easy to work with and fun to work with. Um, it it just became really, really. I guess all like very unstressful, if that makes sense. Like all the stress and all the pressure was taken off me as soon as I met everyone, and it, it just was like easy and fun to record. Right, you had you had stress because you were singing for the first time on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm guessing you had stress because it's The Little Mermaid. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? It's a film that means a lot to people. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's. I guess it's always going to be stressful to kind of recreate a character I guess because you want to get it right but um seriously I mean like I was I was nervous going into it but afterwards just everyone was so friendly and so kind and it just made for like a really fun experience but uh and then obviously like seeing the film uh in scenes like under the sea I thought it looked so cool yeah I thought it looked like really well done in the way that these are all all these animals just seem so familiar because it's something that like I was at the aquarium doing something um looking at (laughs) petting stingray but you could see the fish and you know it's just like it seems like they I like I really like what they did because it makes it so that when you're watching under the sea the whole music sequence it makes it feel like it's something 
that could happen in the ocean just yeah. on their own because the way the sea life and, and the sea urchins or uh, the starfish kind of move along is is they're like dancers they're like choreographed dancers but they're all realistic fish but then they also don't make it so that it's too um i guess unrealistic oh, too cartoony like, too cartoony and then obviously it's not too real where it's kind of like i think it's that perfect mixture and i think it's really colorful too for like something that's Something that takes place under the water, which you have a lot of restrictions when it comes to lighting. I think they managed to do it very well with all the coral and, and the fish and the way that the light shines through the ocean. It, it makes me think about how beautiful the uh, ocean actually is. Yeah. That, that's, when I was watching the Under the Sea sequence, I was mm-hmm. thinking to myself, well, all that stuff is actually down there. Like, yeah, the, no, the, the Under the is. Sea it's is crazy. quite... Sebastian got a point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's absolutely right. Life Under the Sea really is 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 that great. I mean... I think that was another point of the movie is they wanted to have the all the sea life look real because another t- topic that, that kind of loops into the film is taking care of the ocean, which is something that is very important. So to kind of bring life and heart to these creatures I think is very important and I think was another reason why they went for that more realistic approach to it. Am I right that it was five years? You were five when you started acting? Yeah, I was five. That was when I did my first movie. How did you get into acting? It was um, it was my older sister. She kind of started, and I never did uh, sports or anything like that. I was never an athletic little five year old or anything. I wasn't into any of that. Um, I was just really into playing and having fun. I was never into sports. So my sister got into it. And she started doing aud- uh, commercials. Is she much know. older than you? She's nineteen now. This sister. I have two sisters. One's younger, and she's thirteen. Right. And she turns fourteen this summer, which is crazy. But yeah. Um, That's how people feel about you, by the way, being yeah, 16. I by know. the way, right now, people feel that way about yeah. you. And people are like y- yelling at the radio going like, he's, he's one, he's 16. Yeah. Anyway, go on. So she got into, she got in, <laughs> she got into acting. Yeah, she got into doing commercials because she was like, she grew up with like Hannah Montana, which is a show kind of about that, that uh, I guess, stage life. So she was really into that. So she just did it for fun. And basically, I was in, uh, she was doing an audition for a commercial and I was in with her, just not on my own. Just I was just there, like because I was a little baby. Yeah, you I had, think I might have been like three at this time. Right. I was just chilling because obviously I had to be there with them because I couldn't be left home alone at this age. My dad was probably at work. So what happened was, casting the casting direct casting the casting director. <laughs> I guess if that's I'm not really too sure how the casting process of of commercials really works anymore. But yeah. She. Or he, I, I don't know if it was a she or a he, but they basically um, were like, oh, there's a thing for, I think it was Fisher Price or something like, he should audition for that. And I was a little baby. Uh, I ended up doing it for fun because they, I guess my sister had a good experience with it. So my parents were like, okay, well, this is, this is working out well. And then um, I was a little baby trying it. And then I got this like little commercial and it was cool because they literally just have you play with toys when you're, when you're that young. And then yeah, you're not acting, you're just playing with toys. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's all it is. And then they take the clips that they like. And then after that, I kept auditioning for stuff and I became really, really into it. Like, cause obviously like I was been saying, I've, I never did sports or anything like that. So I was really into it. And then I did an audition for my first movie which was Smurfs 2. Uh, my audition was was pretty cute when I look back on it because I think in like the, uh, the what is it, the slate, I had listed off everything that I like that's blue. <laughs> and I was like, and I had a list too, so I was like, I like the, the little uh, tarantulas and the scorpions and the snakes. I like the blue uh, sharks, just like that. And I was five. And I was like, oh, did I say scorpions already? You know, so I, I guess they really liked that. So then they, they casted me. And that was cool because that filmed in like Paris and yeah. Montreal. And that was my first gig. Yeah. I mean, it's wild to think about back then. I mean, I know it wasn't that long ago, but it, 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 the, the difference between five or even eight, you were eight for a room, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the difference between like eight and 16 is so much more than the difference between like 16 and 23 or exactly. like 23 and 29. Yeah. Like it's so long ago. But that mm-hmm. being said, like you have this big breakout role mm-hmm. in room when you're eight years old. Yep. Directors at the time were saying like they were competing to try and get you in the films. You were at the Oscars. You were on talk shows. What's the thing you most remember from that time? I guess I was so little, I couldn't really grasp like the full scope of things. Like when I went on like these talk shows, or I went to like when I went to the Academy Awards, I was so little. I 
couldn't really comprehend it the way I could now. But so when I look back at it now, I'm like, that's crazy. And I was so little. I think I remember saying something when I was so little that that <laughs> that people really liked is I was so short when I'm whenever I was out of at events, all I saw were legs right. because I was so short. So just a sea of legs because I was so small. And I remember really good memories of um, just what was cool is that people made me feel really comfortable when I was at that age by yeah. asking me questions about things that I liked. Like, for example, I i mean, I still love Star Wars, but I, I back then I, I was obsessed with it. So people really made me comfortable by, by starting with questions, asking me about that. And um, I just remember people being so kind and so polite and so yeah. welcoming and so gentle because obviously when you're at that age, I guess your your emotions are, are very delicate, if that makes sense. And people were so, so aware of that. So... Yeah, people it made for a good experience. For pe- sure. People were kind to you, and it's it's funny yeah. you don't. Rem- I wouldn't be surprised. I don't remember anything from when I was eight years old. No, <laughs> I remember like I don't know what's a real memory and what's a picture. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I'm not mm-hmm. surprised you don't remember too much from. Yeah, back there then, are things you know? that that my parents will bring up, or I'll see in a photo, or I was like, I did that. I said that. Like I I did that. For- it's uh, it's it, it's pretty interesting, yeah. I want to talk about another thing you did. So, mm-hmm. so you appeared in uh, the music video for Justin Bieber and Benny Blanco's song yeah. uh, "Lonely," mm-hmm. uh, which is a song about getting famous at a young age. Just, just mm-hmm. take a listen to this. Everybody knows my past now, like my house was always made of glass, and maybe that's the price you pay for the money and fame at an early age. And everybody saw me sick. And it felt like no one gave a sh- They criticized the things I did as an idiot kid. So in the in the music video, you play a younger version of Justin yeah. Bieber. Mm-hmm. That was really cool because they kind of had me in his, his outfit for, um, I guess it was like his whole tour for, I think, Never Say Never. Yeah. So they had me in that kind of outfit that the, is iconic. The purple sweater. The purple sweater and, and the white jacket, the white pants, the purple shoes. And they also gave me the haircut too, <laughs> which uh, uh, is a haircut that maybe hasn't aged well. So I ended up, <laughs> I ended up going real short after that. But, uh, uh, but, but yeah. Jacob, it's interesting to me, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I, think you can, I think you can have perspective on this, that like two Canadian yeah. fellas mm-hmm. who got really – famous at a really early age. Yeah. Did you and Justin get to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing about him on set is I remember he was very, very kind and very, like, humble. Very, very kind to everyone. And it was cool to kind of be a part of something that he was obviously very, very passionate about. He was very passionate about um, putting out the song and expressing his feelings. So obviously, since we both have, I guess, similar experiences in the sense of, of getting famous at a, at a young age and, and being so young, you can't really fully understand the, the full scope of things, I think was cool. And obviously, me being Canadian, too, um, I, it was really cool to be, to be a part of that and, be, and to get invited to be a part of that. It was, uh, it was really awesome. Did he talk to you about any of that stuff about like, hey, the the the, the, the some of the hard stuff about being a child star? Did he did he talk to you about anything? He I, he never got into that. I think just because obviously that's probably something that he keeps to himself. I mean, what's cool is that when I was when I was with well, actually the whole thing was that I was in a grocery oh, voice cracks. <laughs> I was in a grocery store and. I get I get called by him to to be a part of this, and I got sent the song, and it was something that was obviously about his experiences when he was younger. So I was like, yeah, I mean, this is just obviously it's Justin Bieber, and you want to be a part of that video um, because it's a Justin Bieber music video, but also it actually has a very deep, important meaning that you that I myself can look at that and go, okay, well, that's that's a negative experience that someone had at a young age. And I can be grateful for, for what I had and how I was uh, taken through it. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's beautiful. I, mm-hmm. I have a question I've always wanted to know about, mm-hmm. about kids who act in R-rated movies. Yeah. So you were in Predator, yep. Doctor Sleep. Mm-hmm. How does it work when you're in a movie that you're not allowed to watch in theaters? Um, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, I know I know what you mean. And I actually have a funny story about this. So I think I mentioned 
a movie I did, Good Boys, a little earlier, which was a Seth Rogen comedy film that I had done uh, when I was... This was at the time when... This was right before Little, right before I got Little Mermaid, so I think I was twelve. Yeah, and <laughs> there was it was R rated, or fourteen A in Canada, I believe. And I remember I was going to see the film in the theaters with my friends. I was going to take them to see it because it was a pretty cool movie to see with your friends. And these friends were also older than me because they were, they were in my older sister's friend group. So I went with them, and they wouldn't let me in. Because I was younger, <laughs> and then I pointed to the poster that was literally right beside us, at the kind of podium where you where you go in to see the movie. And you I was said, like, "I'm in it." But that's me. The things that I'm not allowed to see, I did. <laughs> but obviously, I didn't do anything that bad. It was really just potty humor, I guess. And, yeah. Um, and did they let you in? I had to wait for someone who was uh, 18 to come in and watch it with us, because <laughs> if I think the way it works is. If you're younger than 14, you have to have an adult to watch it with you. Yeah, there's a story about the kid who was in The Shining mm-hmm. that he didn't know it was a horror movie until seven years after he filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what's, I have something similar to that is the movie Room. Yeah. And this is kind of what, what, what worked so well when I played the character is I was so young, I couldn't fully understand what was going on. And that it worked perfectly because... That is, that's exactly what the character Jack is going through, right? He can't understand anything that's going on. And what I remember is that during press for that, Brie Larson, obviously when she was talking about the more mature themes of the film, I was like, what is she talking about? What, right. is, what does that mean? And um, that's, when I, that's when I was explained, because um, obviously I knew what those things meant but I was confused to why how it tied into the story and then yeah. I was I was older by the time the press came out so that's when people could ex- my parents could explain to me uh, about those things and, and how it tied into the film but I guess that's what works so perfectly is that Jack the character I played doesn't understand what's going on around him he just thinks that what's going on is normal mm-hmm. and that's pretty much that's pretty much it and since I was I was eight when I did that film I just turned eight yeah. I was seven at the beginning, and I think it, that's why it ended up working so well. Because you also didn't know. Because yeah. I also didn't know what was yeah. going on, and I also just, like, all that stuff at the beginning of the film where, where Jack's like, oh, well, hello, egg snake, and, and you know, kind of jumping around, that's all stuff that we just did for fun. They just filmed me. They're, they're like, okay, Jacob, go go have fun in this room. Go play around, and then we all ended up doing that, and that's how it was made pretty much. Well, that's beautiful. Listen, um, you're in The Little Mermaid now. Mm-hmm. It's really it's an exciting time to be to be to getting to talk to you. I'm looking forward to talking to you. Yeah. Are well, you 16 now? This is yep. this is the this is the what's what am I going to do with the rest of my life mm-hmm. or like what am I going to do next portion for a lot of people's lives? You've yes. already done a lot of stuff that people will yes. want to do. Any thoughts about that? I definitely and th- I'll tell you I'll tell you like something cool about this is I really want to go into filmmaking. Right. Like on the other side of the camera, like yeah. writing and directing my own stuff. I've always really been passionate about that and it's interesting because my passion from that mm-hmm. is actually separate from my acting if that makes sense. So when I was really young, I started in commercials, but at the same time in school, my favorite subject was always creative writing and I loved creating stories. That was like my favorite thing to do. I love creating stories and then reenacting them in real life, like with, you know, a pretend sword or whatever. Yeah. And I had no idea how, how well those two things correlated. So now that I understand that those are pretty much the, are work in the same industry, I want to I wanna get into the other side of the camera and, and try directing and, and, and writing. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I want to want to go into. I'm looking forward to, like, 20 years from now when mm-hmm. you like win the Oscar for best screenplay or something <laughs> like that and I'm and I'm that's like the dream. and I go to, I remember when he told me he wanted to be a director you know and that's uh, yeah. that's that's going to be that's going to be me just make sure you still come on the show then hey oh I will I sure. appreciate it Jacob thanks buddy Thank uh, you. thanks for coming in man nice to meet no you no problem nice to meet you too thank you for having me